Hi guys. So in today's video, we're going to do November 2017 paper one, physics. So we're going to cover mechanics part only. So by saying that, it's because uh, we're just going to cover projectile motion. We're going to cover projectile motion, which is a part of mechanics. We're going to cover Newton's laws. Newton's laws. We're also going to cover momentum. Momentum. And take note that we don't cover this one here. We don't do this one in this video. But I promise in my next video we're going to do it. A work. Energy. And power. We, we won't do this one. So we're just going to cover all of these. This is what we are going to cover, but the, the last one we won't cover it. So we are going to cover projectile motion, Newton's laws, and momentum. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to do this past paper. Right, so here we have our first question. So please, when you, when you are in the exam room, you have to stop panicking. Because if you panic, you start confusing yourself, and then at the end you end up like writing the wrong things, even if you know was the correct answer so now i'm just going to show you how how to choose in a multiple choice how to choose how to choose smart okay so let's see this was the first question so it's just like opening question if you can get stuck in the opening question yo i don't know but uh, you're going to have a hectic time because that that's opening question so you must make sure always that you child because it's going to give you energy so let's see the acceleration due to gravity on earth is greater than that on moon so let's say this is earth here and then this is moon here so if you have an object here with mass m and you have an object here this same object with mass m what's going to happen so which one of the following statements is correct so when i check which of the statements is correct the weight of an object on earth is the same as that on the moon okay is that true so let's see the weight on the earth weight on the earth is given by the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational acceleration on earth so which is not the same because the weight on the moon on the other side is given by the mass of the object multiplied by gravitational acceleration on the moon so that means this is not the same so therefore you cancel this this is a smart way to get a correct answer this one already this one you cancel it let's go to b the mass of an object on the earth is the same as that on the moon okay so let's see here we have m this m still on here in here is still m so that's true because only the gravitational acceleration is not the same they even told you here they even told you here in this first statement you see so therefore was saying that this is correct and then you can read further if you want another statement that's correct but already if you got a correct statement you can just stop there okay so that's a correct statement and then here our answer is b then let's move to the next one Okay, so let's move to the second question, which is 1.2. So it says, which one of the following equations for the magnitude of the normal force n is correct? So I want to check which one is correct. And then here we have this force diagram, uh, this force diagram that they gave us. So first you have to draw the, the, the free body diagram in two dimensions. So remember that these if since you have one two three forces which this is a weight this is a normal and then this is f applied 
which is applied an, at an angle theta you have to change this force here you have to change this force into a components so to do that that means you must have this diagram into 2d only like in vertical and horizontal components only so therefore these you when you dissolve these components you're going to have here a vertical force fy and you're going to have another one here fx which is a horizontal force so the new free body diagram is going to be like this this is a fx and this that's going up it's normal and we have another one here that's going up it's going to be the fy and you have another one here which is weight so I want to calculate the normal force remember that these two forces the force is since the object is not moving upwards or downwards so therefore these forces they balance each other these vertical forces balance each other so meaning that normal force plus fy is equal to weight so weight is this one that's going down and the normal force and f1 is that one so they're equal in order to balance the object so that it doesn't go up or down okay so our normal force is given by weight minus fy so now we have to find what's fy so here according to this diagram here we had like this is f uh, this is theta and then this is fy so you can see that fy here fy is given by uh, f sine of theta if you don't know how to find this please go and watch my last videos where i show you how to dissolve and uh, a force like this into components so it's going to be like this therefore the normal force is going to be weight minus f sine of theta right so it's here so that's d so our second answer is d so this is the correct answer and please make sure that you're watching this video after practicing and practicing and practicing practicing theory if you just just jump to question papers you're going to struggle you have to do the theory first okay so let's move to one okay so now let's move to 1.3 so here in this 1.3 we have this diagram here so now and then they're asking us which one which one of the combinations below regarding the magnitude of the stone's velocity and acceleration at time t1 is correct so remember as i told you that in a vertical projectile motion if you project the object is going to turn at some point but the one thing that you must keep in mind is that the acceleration of that object the acceleration of the object it's always 9.8 meter per second squared pointing downwards so it's always like that downwards so it's always pointing down so it's 9.8 pointing down so here that means this since it doesn't that the magnitude of acceleration at some point is zero we cancel this this is already out and then the second thing that we must cancel is this one that says zero because we know that acceleration is always 10.8 then we are left with two options now so we have to choose which one so here's a turning point is where the object turns so i told you that again you can use another method to calculate to find what is this the velocity at some point because the velocity of an object it's given by the gradient of uh, displacement versus time graph so here at this point if the gradient you can calculate the gradient at this point here the gradient is zero because this is a horizontal line and at this point here if you draw a, a, a tangent the gradient at this point is not zero so therefore it tells you that at the turning point again we have a gradient of zero and we know that again from our vertical projectile topic that where the object turns where the object turns it changes the direction therefore the velocity is zero the, so let's look at this one d says that the velocity is v which is wrong and then we're left with one which is a and then a is the correct answer okay so let's move to the next one we have 1.4 here it says a trolley of mass m is moving at a constant velocity v to the right so it's moving at a constant v to the right on on a frictional less horizontal surface that means we have no friction a ball of clay also of mass m so the trolley and the ball they have the same mass dropped vertically falls on onto the trolley at time t so at time t the ball hits uh the, the trolley as shown in the diagram 
diagram it's here we are shown that and the ball of the clay sticks to the trolley so they stick after that which one of the following velocity time graphs below correctly represent the velocity of the trolley before and after t so I want to check which one of these graphs represent the velocity of the trolley before and after after the, the what is this the, the collision or we can say the collision okay so first remember that they said that the, the trolley was moving at a constant velocity so here we are going to have a velocity view which is a velocity of the trolley initially and then something drops into that uh, object so since it was moving at a constant velocity that means the f or f f net was zero so f net f net before was zero and we know that f is given by mass multiplied by acceleration and what's acceleration acceleration is a, it's 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 a acceleration is a change in velocity over time right so f is equal to m multiplied by v over t okay so here we're just trying to find a the relationship between the velocity and the mass so after that what you can do you can arrange that making v as the subject of the formula then you take this you multiply this side and you divide by that you're going to get v is equal to f times t since you're multiplying this side and then you divide by m divide by m so you see that here the uh, relationship tells you that velocity is inversely proportional to the mass if you increase the mass by two you are decreasing velocity by half can you see that I don't know whether you can see that so our relationship is going to be our relationship from that is going to be v is there is inversely proportional to the mass so since the mass was doubled now because they said here these things they stick together so if they stick uh mass is doubled so v initially was that and then if you double the mass therefore you are going to uh decrease the the velocity so if mass is doubled the velocity is decreased right so which one is this in these graphs so that means if this graph was like this when you drop that this is going to drop a bit to a point where now the velocity is half v because uh, uh you increase the mass so you double the mass the velocity decrease uh, by half so it's here your answer c so you take c as your answer this is the correct answer okay so let's move on to the next question